Hair salon. The cab. Ay, the cab in the bus. It's like a needle in a haystack, you know? My eyes, though. I proclaim the declaration of Kika. So today I'm just using my phone because about the camera. We are at the parliament. So we're here to meet. Who are we here to meet? People. Official people. That's why we had to dress up. Look, I'm so proper. Charat. Para akong first lady. Makakalam na ako ng asawa dito. Dito para mga officials. Oh. <laughs> I know. Well, so, kasi dito sa room. Akala namin yun yung entrance nung place. CR pala. Oh. I mean, WC. So, ito na. Kasi kailangan ng passport. In case you need your passport. Weh, look here. Naka ng brown eyes. Time to get started. What you're looking at is an exact replica of the Declaration of Independence. The original document is being preserved in state archives here in Jerusalem. And we wanted to be able to still show it here in the Knesset, so it's still on display in the entrance. So everyone that passes through here, all the members of Knesset on their way to work, they see this document and remember. Okay, so welcome to Shagal Hall. This hall is where we invite our special guests we invite foreign dignitaries. We have ceremonies. We might have a holiday ceremony here. We had a Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year ceremony was here. We also have presidential inaugurations happen here. It's called the Chagall Hall because all of the artwork in this hall is made by Mark Chagall. So the artwork in this hall is the three tapestries behind me. Yes, they're tapestries. They're not watercolor paintings. I thought they were paintings. There's 12 floor mosaics and there's a wall mosaic. Okay, behind you. So a little bit about Marc Chagall. Marc Chagall was born in Belarus, but spent most of his life in uh, France. And he always wanted to make Aliyah, and then in 1960, the uh, speaker of the Knesset asked him, commissioned him, to make artwork for this hall. At that point, Marc Chagall decided to make the artwork, but he ended up donating it, uh, all the artwork. All the artwork in here is worth about $15 million. Marc Chagall is a very famous artist. He has also uh, other works like the glass in the UN, uh, the stained glass window, and many other things. Okay, so I'm going to start talking about the tapestries. Tapestries are made in a very unique style called the De Goblin style. So they were hand weaved with over 144 different strands of color. Okay, and that's why you see incredible different colors. It's all string. Oh my God. The work took eight years to make. So four years. Oh my God. And we can see that <coughs> Marc Chagall designed his painting, the original painting, in 1954. And then it took four more years to weave. And you can see that here. 1968. Okay, there's so eight years these tapestries to create. These tapestries represent three different periods in Jewish history one the past, one the present, and one the future. Okay, anybody guess which one's the past, present, or future? What's that one you think? Yeah. The past, future? Okay, what about this one? It's the past. It's the past? Okay, this one? Well, the present, if you said. You're yeah. actually, I think, I think no one else has ever gotten that right, so good job. Yeah. <laughs> so, exactly right. This one represents the past. This one is the present of 1960 when it was commissioned. And that one is the future. Okay? The future, yeah. This is called the Exodus from Egypt. Okay? Mm. Mark Shabbat portrays the Jewish people leaving Egypt, and you can see their running away from fires, pogroms, other symbolic elements of Egypt, and they're going all towards Jerusalem in the top left corner. And you can see other uh, atrocities that Mark Chagall considered that happens with Jewish people. Uh, among the flames, we see also a man that's lying dead, a figure uh, in between six candles, and that represents the Holocaust and the six million Jews who oh. perished in it. Uh, to the left and a little bit below, we see a man holding a sack in purple, yeah? So that's the wandering Jew, okay? Mark Chagall is trying to say that he 
has his back to Jerusalem and his face towards the flames. So he doesn't know where he's going and he is going towards the danger and away from Jerusalem. The people are being led towards Jerusalem by these two massive figures, okay? We can't ignore them. The two ones in the front. Anybody know who this is? Moses. Yeah, exactly. This is Moses. So we can recognize him by the two rays of light that come from his head and the tablets he's holding, okay? Ten Commandments. Here, anyone recognize this figure? King David. King David. Exactly. You guys know your stuff. So this is King <laughs> David behind me. And we recognize him by the heart and by the crown. And Mark Chagall does something very interesting with these two figures who are larger than life, who are leading the people and taking them where they need to go. They're pointing them in the right direction. And they're guarding them. But he also puts them in a smaller form inside of painting. So here, we see David again. Yeah, we can see he has the head of Goliath, right? Okay, that's how we know it's David. And here, we have Moses, and he's holding the Ten Commandments. He still has those rays of light, right? What's Mark Shagat trying to tell us? He's telling us that these giant figures who are greater are also our size. Those figures that are leading the people, they're also part of the people. And every day when the members of Knesset pass through here and they look at this and they see, you can't ignore these giant figures. They are reminded that they're also a part of the people. Behind King David is a figure I like to talk about sometimes. It's a figure that's ambiguous. Mark Shagat never defined who this was. Some people say maybe it's Bathsheba from the Jewish literature. Some people say maybe the Jewish bride. Most Mark Shagat experts agree that that's probably Mark Shagat's first wife, Bella Rosenfeld. She died at a very early age in their marriage, and he always mourned her, and he always loved her very much and he wanted to forever commemorate her so he put her in this painting and the reason why I think it's her and no other bride is because we see a figure coming out of her legs see Aww. that's Mark Chagall okay? he often portrayed himself in his paintings as playing the violin so that's how we know it's him I want to talk about the tapestry representing the 1960s present the return to Zion we have different groups and everyone's dancing happy. Okay, we can see them they're different colors. That was a time where a big aliyah came to Israel. Many, many Jews came in from all over the world to celebrate and be part of the nation. We also see some Jewish holidays being celebrated <coughs> here in Shoshana. We can see, for example, the Jewish New Year. We can see them blowing the shofar horns, which is what we do in Shoshana to start the New Year. That's how we know it started. And we see very much happiness. But in all the happiness, we see two not so pink, I guess, <coughs> figures. And the first one is the soldier. Everyone see him on the bottom left corner? Yes. And he's standing on a bush with this flag uh, coming out of the bush. So the bush, that's a certain flower. It's called the blood of the Maccabees. And that's the national flower for uh, Israel's Memorial Day. So if you hear of our Memorial Day, you'll see people have stickers with red flowers on them. That's the same flower. And Put, Mark Chagall put the soldier here in the middle of all the happiness to remind everyone that looks at this tapestry that it didn't come easy having a state. It wasn't just all happiness and dancing. We did make a big sacrifice to come here and we can never forget that. Another interesting thing to point out in this tapestry is this dream bubble at the top left corner. Okay, can anybody guess what city that is? Yeah, it's Jerusalem. Okay. It's the old city. And that's because at the time this was commissioned in 1960, Jerusalem was still not reunited under Israeli uh, authority. It was in two separate states. The so Marcha God puts it in a dream-like state, a little bit far and disconnected. But he puts it there anyways because it's very important to the Jewish people to have a united Jerusalem. The last thing I'm going to talk about in this tapestry is David. Okay, we see him he's also still a very large figure, not as big as a tapestry representing the past, but he's still there. And what he does here is make a connection. He really connects the past and the present. You can't have one without the other. Okay, the final tapestry is here. The vision of the end of days, okay? Uh, it represents the future, the prophet Isaiah's future. And we see the same vibrant colors that we saw in the tapestry that represented the present. But here the colors are mixed together. You know, there's no more groups. They're not a group that came from Russia and from Yemen and from the United States and from East Europe and from 
all the different places that people emigrated to Israel, there's not groups anymore. Everyone's one. Mm -hmm. Okay? We also see sworn enemies living together, just like in the prophet, uh, which Isaiah prophesied. We see uh, the lion and the lamb, uh, the child and the leopard, and many other natural enemies that are living as one, and that's Marcio's hope for the future. The last figure I'll talk about in this tapestry is the one that connects to the tapestry of the past. It's Moses. In the top right corner, we can see with the angel wings, he's still holding the, uh, the tablets. That really makes a cycle, okay? The past, the present, the future, they're all one, they're all connected. But Marcia Hill didn't want to create some discomfort. He didn't want to have anyone stepping on religious symbols because he knew his artwork would be a floor. But he didn't want us to feel like we're walking in disgracing the symbols, so he made them near accurate. Like, you'll see this menorah here. Oh, usually I have a very convenient menorah here, but there's one over there. And we can see that not the, this one is missing a candle stick, okay? And that's the same for all of the full mosaics to create, um, to actually take away the discomfort of stepping on religious symbols. All of the tiles here are from Israel. Okay, the white is Jerusalem stone, okay? You've been to Jerusalem, you saw that all the buildings have the white stone. The green and the reds, they're Elat stone, okay, they're from the, the south. And the black is basalt rock from the volcanic north. Okay, so Mark Shagad purposely took uh, Israeli stones for this. Yeah, <laughs> they <laughs> are gifts now from different countries. Here, like for example, this gift is from India. And this is it. We have to have This is from Laos. So pretty. And this one is from Peru. Right there. What is that? Parsons. Prime ministers. Oh my girl, I love it. Hi. You look so official. Welcome. Shalom. got out of the building and honestly I don't know how I'm gonna edit it it's so long <laughs> so bahala na and and dami tin Asian kitty crystal mga patuti kaya video ang ko hey hello 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 girl la luna la may mga barilo huh. anyways we, is this the holocaust museum crystal Day, Memorial Day, which is called Yom HaShoah. 
it's a Holocaust day, your members of parliament, living in the parliament, mm. are actually reading literary names of people to remember them, that we remember mm. them. And we have all kinds of pavilions to remember them. Among in these horror times, where they were threatened by the Nazis, that if you save a Jew, you are going to be annihilated, you and your family. Still there were people, and it's beyond my understanding that they were saving Jews. So in order to honor those people, when you enter to Yad Vashem, mm. you will see trees, mm. next to, even here, mm. next to the tree you will see a little flag, yeah. the yeah. name of the person and from what country the person came, those that saved Jews. And we call those people the righteous among the Gentiles, talking mm. about Gentiles. Mm. So here is a tree that is dedicated to someone who has saved a Jewish person. Then here are representations of all the children, this one, and then this one is the home. Unfinished home? No. Okay, so this one, Lampala. A miracle occurred. 200 children did not cry out. 200 pure souls condemned to death did not weep. Not one of them ran away. None tried to hide. Like stricken swallows, they clung to their teacher and mentor, to their father and brother, Yanis Korja, so that he might preserve them. Yanis Korjak was marching, his head bent forward, holding the head of a child without a hat, a leather belt around his waist, and wearing high boots. A few nurses were followed by 200 children dressed in clean and meticulously clothed as they were being carried to the altar. On all sides, the children were surrounded by Germans, Ukrainians, and this time, also Jewish policemen. They whipped and fired shots at them. The very stones of the street wept at the sight of the procession. So they put stones in respect for the dead. Usually, when there's a tombstone in the cemetery, they put a stone. But since those children don't have those stones, but they just put it there. A new square. Google it. So grab it at Gaya. I touched it on the side. No, she never put it on the bata. That we have a picnic lang sila. That was he made them wear their best clothes. Kano that's in reality, but patayin lang sila grave. Kapag tarosil siya bisa mga bata kasi sa picnic. Picnic na. So we just got out of the Holocaust Museum. How did you find? Bawal para magpicture, so wala hong nakuwang clips for you guys. Munti ka na ako magvideo dun eh. Pero grabe, I don't know how then you can just take it all and then be happy or be fine afterwards. Kasi nakaka-affect talaga siya ng morals. Nakaka-sad. Oh, nakaka-inis. Sobrang nakaka-inis si Hedy. Hindi kasi, yun kasi yung pininiwalaan nila eh. Alam mo yun. Parang, okay, I'll be back later. Okay, so now we are back, back. We are back in the bus, and they just gave us some pin from the, what the babe? Department of the Tourism. So uh, they gave us a pin, which is very thoughtful. So in that serious mobility, Kabe, it's crazy how much I don't know about the past, like about the Holocaust. But I only know that they didn't like the Jew. I didn't know exactly why. So if you are like me. We don't know anything about that. What happened is, the German Jews, I just got to know, the German Catholics are all and they blame the Jewish people for killing Christ. Because you know, Jewish people are the ones who crucified Jesus in the first time. So, so ito na lang kasi konti lang ilaw ay so hindi nila nagustuhan nila so talagang they took it up to themselves like Adolf Hitler to kill all the Jews and they killed six million people that's a country like now Israel is eight million with the Arabs so minus the Arabs it's the whole country 
to Krakow. Tapos pinakita doon yung mga chinelas nila, yung mga pictures ng mga bata, yung meron pa silang Hall of Names. Bawal kasi mag-picture sa mundo talaga na kunan. Tapos meron doon mga video. Talagang parang dito document pa nila noon lahat. Kasi mga picture na talagang diretso sa ulo yung mga baril. Kasi daw sayang sa bala. Buti mo naisip nila yung sayang sa bala. Kaya laging diretso sa ulo pag binabaril yung mga tao sa kanila. Grabe. I cannot. I'll continue this talk na lang later. So, ano ang energy. Nakatulog ako ng konti sa bus. And I'm just so tired. So, mag-vlog na lang ako sa phone ko. And we are here now at in a monument where... I forgot his name. Pero this guy basically saved Jewish people in the Holocaust. So, yeah. We're here. We're gonna learn. Last stop. and good evening. This is a joyous moment for me personally. We would show the Open Doors Monument on TV very often in our show and now I'm standing right here by the grace of God and on a very special day where we can broadcast and we can declare and shout out loud that the nation of the Philippines stands with Israel. I just want to welcome you. This is a historic moment for you as well as for the country of Israel and for our country and we should rejoice Thank you very much. Hey, my name is Asha Kohn as you just know and I would like to welcome you on behalf of our city and our mayor Mr. Dovtsu I appreciate very much the visits of the Philippines as I appreciate even more what the Philippine people and their president at that time, Manuel Quezon, has done for our people. For me, personally, this is very important because I am a Holocaust survivor. I'm a victim of the Nazi regime and the Nazi persecution in Romania, where I was born. Many of my family died, they were murdered by the Nazis and their Romanian collaborators in the concentration camp to give them a, a shelter, a, a safe shelter in your country, in Manila, in Marikina. Marikina, yes, yes. The name. yes. This will never forget. Our people will never forget what you have done. Oh God, we thank you for your mercies. Yes. We thank you for your love. Yes. We thank you, Lord, that even today, as we cry out to you, gathered in your name, Jesus, in agreement in prayer, yes. we ask you, Father, to let the generations after us just keep in their hearts, Lord God, what, what you have put in our hearts now, Lord. And we pray that the young people of Israel, the young people of the Filipinos will continue this legacy, Lord God. We thank you that they will love each other, that we'll always be united for your kingdom purposes, yes. Lord. We thank you, Father that you're in complete control and that the God of Israel, your love yeah. will go from everlasting yes. to everlasting. Yes. Cry out to you, Father, with gratitude, yes. with so much gratefulness, Father, yes. in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua, our Lord, our Savior. Amen. I whisper, I whisper. 